India's southeast coast is known for its well-lit shallow waters with rich coastal biodiversity. The penetration of sunlight along with rich sedimentation creates unusually fertile waters, which not only offers a treasure trove of marine life, but also supports diverse livelihoods of thousands of people. Due to lack of opportunities in the hinterland, fishing and its allied activities have been the primary occupation of Park Bay. Park Bay has both traditional and mechanized fishing practices. Manual harvesting practices like diving for pearls, conches, shells and other marine collections are common in the region. Other traditional fishing methods include trap fishing, hook and line fishing, beach seine fishing among others. Most of these traditional methods are low impact with minimal damage and wastage of marine life and therefore ecologically safe. However, not all traditional fishing practices are mindful of the resources at large. For example, beach seine fishing. A method similar to trawling, it involves 40 to 60 people wading through the shallower waters, combing the seabed with their net. Though indiscriminate in its harvesting of marine life, it is still a community fishing model where all profits are shared, unlike in trawling. With increasing competition in fishing, this method is also becoming more damaging with reducing mesh size. Sometimes protected species are caught in traditional nets. The ideal practice is to return these to the sea immediately. However, Sometimes this is not followed. Okay. They get caught as a bycatch. So the fishermen, truly speaking, they cannot segregate when they are fishing. Only when it is lifted up, they come to realize that there is something which is contraband which is caught in the nets. It is in the 1970s that changes came into the fishing practices in Park Bay. The bigger and powerful trawlers were introduced into this seascape. The trawl nets mostly comb the ocean floor, churning, destroying and harvesting everything that comes in its way. <laughs> Trawling involved large profits and larger investments. This, with the encouragement from the government through subsidies, it found many new entrants into fishing. Many of these people do not understand the species they catch, the rhythms of breeding of marine life, or have conservation concerns. The traditional sector also saw changes during this time. The wooden boats were motorized, and many of them were replaced by fiber-reinforced plastic boats. Fishing gear also changed from natural cotton and hemp nets to nylon and monofilament nets. These changes allowed them to go further and stay longer in the sea, thus increasing the fishing effort and thereby increasing the pressure on the resources. The uncontrolled increase in trawler numbers 
and the unregulated fishing that ensued led to decline in fish resources, forcing many trawlers to fish very close to the shore. The trawlers profited at the expense of the small fishers. This led to many incidences of conflict between the traditional and the mechanized sectors. Tamil Nadu Marine Fishing Regulation Act was put in place in the 1980s, also to protect the rights of small-scale fishers. According to this act, a zone of 3 nautical miles or 5 km from the high tide line was exclusively set aside for small-scale fishers. பெரிய பெரிய போட்டு வந்து கடற்கரை பகுதிகளில் அந்த ஐந்து கிலோமீட்டருக்கு உள்ளேயே மீன்பிடி தொழில் செய்கிறதுனால இந்த சிறு தொழில் மீனவர்கள் நாட்டுப்படகு மீனவர்கள் அதிக அளவில் பாதிக்கப்பட்டாங்க When discussing resource conservation in Park Bay, fisheries are generally regarded as the only culprit. However, increasing threats of pollution due to dumping of untreated domestic sewage into the bay, effluents from aquaculture, tourism, salt pans and the dangers of the cultivation of introduced seaweed species also gravely affect the ecological health of the bay and the livelihoods dependent on this. Coastal aquaculture, primarily for the culture of prawns, was also initiated in this region during the late 1980s and early 1990s. New economic policy in Shalwa. And the Pudya Puradra Kulhin Mulamaha, Kuripaha Karalakare or a Padigal Padakina, Ral Turit Chalahil Armika Kuria, or Turila on the Armichanga. Initial profits from aquaculture led to its spatial spread as well as its intensification. High costs involved in prawn farming brought in investment and ownership from outside. அப்ப அந்தனுடைய பாதிப்புகள் வந்து மக்களுக்கு தெரியல ரால் பணிகளால் என்னென்ன பாதிப்புகள் இருக்குது அப்படின்றது வந்து தெரியல மீன் வளம் கடல் வளம் வந்து குறைஞ்சிக்கிட்டே வர்றது அப்படின்றது வந்து தெரிய வந்தது அதன் அடிப்படையில் அந்த மீனவ சமுதாய மக்களுக்கு இது பற்றி விழிப்புணர்வு வந்து நாங்கள் கொடுத்தோம் ஒன்ஸ் வந்து கல்டிவேஷன் முடிஞ்சதுக்கு அப்புறம் வந்து என்டையர் கெமிக்கல்ஸ் எங்கே கொடுக்குறாங்க அப்படின்னா டேரக்ட்லி லெட் இன் டு த சி வித் அவுட் எனி ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் So, this is why we have the entire coastal resources like sea grass, sea weed, plus the entire resources are completely depleted. After the introduction of aqua farm, aqua culture, all the spring water is converted into saline water. Agriculture land is also converted into saline water. Pointing fingers on just one sector, when the resource decline is the result of the cumulative many, is unfair. It is high time that all drivers responsible for the ecological deterioration of the bay are taken into account and holistic solutions sought. The coastal communities of Park Bay are well aware of the bleak future they face if present ways are continued. This has led to several sporadic actions on the ground. For example, in the village of Krishnapuram, the local fishing community has banned shore sand fishing. And the muddy was illegal than a la mean along Lalinzu or than a la mean the Amaricade. Ipon there and the Irumadi Ilka than a la when you mean the Alanaria mean the bottom. This village has also banned open defecation by imposing fines on violators. Such efforts of self-regulation need to be recognized, incentivized and popularized along the coast to make a meaningful impact. Apart from this, with support from various agencies, Local fisher entrepreneurs are looking at ways of dovetailing the existing resources into more sustainable and diversified livelihoods. research 
அதில் தான் நாங்கள் வந்து இப்போ எடுத்து அதை பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் Wild Park Bay faces a fragile future with growing human pressure. It is in the convergence of efforts and people's participation that its protection and survival depends.